Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. He says, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Come on. 2 Timothy 1.10 says, the gospel, through the gospel, Christ abolished death and he brought life and immortality. Now, I told you last week, the gospel was preached to me as the good news, but I never understood the good news. I only had half a news. The good news is there's life and immortality. Everybody say, and. Amen. Now, that word and means something. It means there's more than just what you think. Amen. Now, he says, I brought unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, wherein you stand. Okay. <laughs> when you stand, you stand in life and immortality. You're already standing in it because you have the gospel. There are so many things that we, we, we just misunderstand it and misunderstand it. Listen, and please don't condemn um, the people where we've come out. It's as time goes, revelation grows. It's not that they taught us wrong. They did their best on where they were. Come on, guys. Martin Luther was an awesome guy, but I know more than Martin Luther already. It doesn't say I am greater than Martin Luther or bigger than him. He might have been a better person than me. But because of the time that I'm alive, I know more. Wow, aren't you glad you're alive? The minute you are saved, you stand in immortality. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain, for I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I received. Now, please, he was not there when Jesus died. He was there when Stephen died. This is Paul writing. He says, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. <laughs> according to the scriptures. And he was buried and he rose again the third day. Come, let's put it here. There's the cross. Oh, can you see it? I'll make it a little bit darker. He died on the cross. What was the next thing? He was buried. And then what happened? Did he stay there? No way. He came up out of it. Okay. And this is the gospel. He was crucified. He died. He rose again. And this brought life and immortality. Okay, now I want you to understand that we've got to really get what's happening in this whole thing. Galatians 4.4 4 says, in the fullness of time. So I want, to, I want to do it like this. This is the highest point in time. Um, Colossians 1 says, in the Message Bible, he says, in the climax of the ages, Christ brought life. He brought a whole new way of living. It's 9 verse 10. And carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. This is the time of reformation. Not Martin Luther. Jesus brought it. Now, what does reformation mean? Go on to verse 20. I love what it says here. When Jesus came, he brought reformation. And what he did, he brought a whole new and living way. Everybody say living way. Everything became new. He gave us a new song. He gave us a new name. He gave us, everything became new. And we still have to understand what new means because we are new creation and we still hold on to the old. Jesus brought a whole new day. He was the last Adam and he became the second man. He's turning around. Everything that happened from the beginning to year, he changed around and it's never ever going to be the same again. So quickly go with me to Romans 6. I think if we can understand Romans 5, 6, and 7, this is what Martin Luther read, and it made 
<laughs> he walked to the church and he's, he put the 95 thesis on the wall, at, uh, on the door. We actually visited that place uh, where this man, he, he brought a reformation and he said, we will take what God has given. Because right through the ages, it's like every time something new is broken through, it's like a battle that's got to go, go on. We've got to, you've literally got to break it through. I was just sharing with him, like everybody was talking in tongues in the book of Acts. But why only in the 1900s were people first talking tongues? Because everything had to go down so that it can be raised again. But I want you to read from verse 3. Listen to this. Know you not. <laughs> Come on, last week we did. Do not be deceived. Do not be ignorant. Now he says, don't you know? So it's something that you must know. Everybody, bump your neighbor and say, I'm going to know what she's talking about now. Bump your other neighbor and say, I mean it. <laughs> know you not. Viet jylle nie. Do you not understand that as many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, are baptized into his death? You are baptized into Christ. What are we talking about? The gospel. Therefore, we are buried with him in baptism unto death that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. So we are, we have died with Christ. We are buried with Christ. And we are raised with Christ. Okay. Okay. So that brings me to another problem. Why do we wait to die? We've already died. I'm going to say it again. The minute you step from darkness to light, you've already stepped from death to life. Because what happens before the cross, there was what it's called the body of sin. And he says in Romans 7, who will rip me of this body of sin? How did we get rid of the body of sin? We were baptized into Christ. And now we are raised with Christ and we are new in Christ. So what happens when you come out here, you have a mortal body. You are not a body of sin. This is why it says, do not let sin now reign in your mortal body. You have now a new way of life. You are in control of what's happening in you because you have now the Spirit of God in you. Christ in you is the hope of glory. The hope of glory. What glory? The glory of where our bodies are also going to be changed. I'm going to throw you with a lot of rough scriptures tonight and the word is going to go up. <laughs> Do you understand? Now he says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51, <laughs> he says, I show you a mystery. We did that last week. Now, I just want to say, this cross is also a mystery. 1 Timothy 3, 16 says, he says, great is the mystery of godliness. God coming, God coming in flesh, becoming a human being. Dying in our place, seen of angels, received up. Come on, this is a mystery. Now, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 says, I show you a mystery. We shall not all die. We shall all be changed. I'm going to write it here. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verse, I would say from verse 49, it goes on. It is exactly the same as 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13. Remember, I told you it's the 1, 2, 3 of, of immortality. How is it going to happen? How is it going to happen? 
This is what we did last week. So he says, there he says, Behold, I'll show you a mystery. We shall not all die. So some of these mortal bodies are going to die. And some are going to live. Because mortal means still liable to death. But immortal, immortal means not liable to death. So he says, some of us are not going to die, and some of us are going to die. <laughs> but he says here, whether I live or die, I belong to God. Whether I wake or sleep, I belong to God. We shall not all sleep, says 1 Thessalonians 4. He says, I do not want you to be ignorant about the people that died in Christ. He says, that are asleep in Christ. Now, when Jesus came on the scene, everything changed. <laughs> Everybody say, new. This morning, as I stepped out of bed, God gave me a vision. I'm standing at a grave. I was burying a woman, and I saw it. It was the most terrible sight I've seen. It's, it was in the middle of the drought, and it was way up north on the uh, Botswana border, and there was no grass. It was as hot as anything. The half of the people just attended the church and went back because they all had these game farms, and they had to shoot out their animals. It was so dry. And here we're standing at this woman. She believes in immortality. And she dies, and I have to bury her. And I'm like, this is not, it's just dust and ground and sun and heat. And I preached life in that situation. But this morning, I saw the picture of that place. And all of a sudden, I realized that I stood in front of this open grave, burying someone that believes in immortality. And I've, how, how, how do you bring these things together? Because Christ abolished death and brought life and immortality. Why do people still die? I'll tell you why. Because we don't understand our situation and our time. We try to fight for life. The Bible says if you fight for life, you lose your life. We have to fight for faith and lay hold on life. There's a big difference. Because life is already ours. Oh my gosh. You know, if I've paid my car, I don't go to a bank and say, can I pay my car? My car is paid down. This is what we as Christians do. We want to suffer for something that's already ours. And then we miss enjoying what God has given us. So I saw this morning how someone stood at an open grave and he's saying, from dust you came, from to dust you go. And I saw myself standing with this dusty grave and I'm preaching life. And God said to me, just like this, in the New Testament, you cannot go back to dust after Christ. This is the dust era. So I went and looked. Nowhere, <laughs> yellow, nowhere in the New Testament, he says, you're going to go back to dust. Jesus came and he says, shake off the dust. And who did he speak to? The people in the law. He says, if you go in and they don't receive it, shake off the dust of your feet. He says, I'm going to sit until my enemies be my footstool. Shake off the dust of your feet. So I found three places in the book of Acts where he talks about dust. But these people were throwing dust in the air. And it's all places where they had a confrontation with the man that got the mystery of immortality, which is Paul. And every time they wanted to get rid of Paul, they went 
berserk. They went bananas, threw dust in the air, screaming. So the Romans had to come and save him. That's the only place you read about dust. Those people, <laughs> at the end of Paul's life, he came to a point where he washed his hands and he said, you count yourself now unworthy of eternal life. And he never turned back to the Jewish people again. And he just went on. And this is when he came all the way around to Rome and the gospel has been preached to all the world. We have to understand the Bible right. Everybody, we're not going back to dust. We're going to shake it off the dust. <laughs> so now these two scriptures in the New Testament, he says, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. So some will be alive. He says, the first thing that's going to happen, there will be a trumpet, number one. There's going to be a trumpet call. Number two, the dead will rise first. He says, those that died will be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, and then we which are alive and remain. Now he says it in 1 Corinthians 15, he says, mortal will have put on immortality. Yeah. And corruptible will put on incorruption. But in verse 49 he says, corruption cannot put on incorruption, but corruptible can put on incorruption. So the minute you've stepped into Christ, <laughs> you are secured. Now, when I was in Bible school, this was every week a fight for a whole year long in our class. Um, Calvinism and all these guys, uh, once saved, always saved. Eternal security is a true. <laughs> now, I want to say to everybody, we don't understand those things because we don't understand that we are spirit, soul, and body. So when Jesus came and I received Christ, they lied to me. They told me my soul is safe. And I have taught you people, you know by now your soul is not safe. He did not put his soul on my soul. He did not put his body on my body. He put his spirit on my spirit and he sealed it. And the only thing, way you break the seal is when you go out and you curse the Holy Spirit and turn against everything. Now, I'll tell you what, I know many people that have backslidden, but they don't go that way. Do you understand? If you just miss God, you are still a child of God. You can run where you want to. He's running with you. And that is his patience and his love and his grace for you. So we have to understand everything about the Bible. He says, if the same spirit that raised, oh my gosh, Christ from the dead, he will quicken your mortal body. Because when you were raised with Christ, <laughs> you have his spirit inside of you. Christ in me is the hope of glory. Woo, do you get it? So 1 Thessalonians uh, 4.13 says, God will bring those people with. There'll be a shout, a trumpet call, and the dead in Christ will rise first, and then those that are alive and remain, the remaining ones, will be caught up in the spirit, in the air. So there's two Two pieces that really deals with immortality. But today, I want to look at this whole dust thing. Everybody say, <laughs> I am not going back to dust. Okay, so how was man created? In the beginning, God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. And he created man. So what does God look like? God looks like man. Because man was made in the image and likeness of God. If you go look in Exodus 24 verse 10, he saw the whole Israel saw the image of God in the likeness of the clearness of heaven. I never saw that scripture. So God has hands, God has eyes, God has... This is why when God... <laughs> prepared a body on the earth in Jesus 
and the Spirit came on him. It was not a bird that came to sit on his shoulders, guys. It was the Spirit that looked like a dove that came and sat in on him. And the Spirit never left the planet because the body was now nailed to the cross, but the Spirit stayed down here. It was poured out in on us. Do you understand? So we carry that part. That part made our bodies mortal. You are not a sinful body. You're a mortal body. So you're not going to be a slave to sin. In other words, if you see something that is not right, you can take control and say, I don't want to watch this. I don't want to smoke this. I don't want to drink this. I want to be, <laughs> have my being in God. You have the choice to do it. You see, we want the preacher to pray for us and everything must happen. But there is something about um, immortality that has to happen to you. Now, before we go to those two scriptures in Revelation, I want us to go back to um, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not. Oh, please, reckon yourself dead to sin. Go read Romans 4 again. Because this is very important. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God, and I speak this to your shame. Then he goes on, but some man will say, how does the dead raise up? And he goes and he explains the whole of resurrection to us. Man, I love listening to the word. So you have to awake. So you are now, listen, you are raised with God. But for mortal to put on immortality, you have to awake. And what does he say? You have to wake out of your sleep. How do you wake out of your sleep? You start understanding what has happened to you when Christ came to you. But there are so many scriptures that we understand just a little wrong and that messes us up. I'm going to take you to one in, um, go with me to Revelation 14, verse 13. Now, this is a scripture that I personally have preached wrong. Please forgive me. Do you understand? We've got no one else to blame. <laughs> Revelation is falling, and if you stay in the Word, you'll get it. You're not going to get it if you don't stay in the Word. Everybody say, I'm hungry. Are you? Oh, I'm so hungry for the Word. <laughs> he says, I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, they may rest from their labors and their work do follow them. Revelation 14, verse 13. Blessed are those that die in Christ. Okay. Is this speaking about when I die. When did I die in Christ? I saw this for the first time today. When did I die in Christ? I was nailed with Christ. I was buried with Christ and I raised with him. So where is my death? This is why it says, labor to rest. Do you understand? So if I die in Christ here, then this death is nothing. We haven't got a problem with immortality. We've got a problem with death. We don't understand death because Christ's death marks the point of the end of death as the end, like we know it. Paul says, whether I live or die, I belong to Christ. And we are fighting for life. We don't want to die. You already died. Do you understand? This is not death. God calls it sleep. Blessed are those that sleep. They will be raised first. He says, 
mortal will put on immortality and corruptible will put on incorruption. All will be changed. That is the mystery. Do you understand? Blessed are those that die in Christ. <laughs> they will rest from their labor and their works will follow them. Is that for someone that died or is it for us that are in Christ? Do you understand what I'm saying? We have postponed it till the end. So what is our problem is, oh, I'm going to work for God. I'm going to work for God. I want open doors. Listen, I'm sitting with the same thing now. I've got to go overseas and I've got to book my flights. And you, you can do it and you can do it. Or you can step in and say, God, I put my feet in the water and my, my doors were all open. And my work followed me wherever I go. Do you understand that it's not a, it's not a labor, it's a rest. And it's not for one day, it's for now. We have postponed it for forever and we don't understand death. Now, 1 Corinthians 15 says, Christ was the first fruit to be raised from the dead. So if he was the first, then we are to follow. But from Christ, there's no more generations, there's no more seeds, because there's only one generation and one seed. We have to literally understand what happened from the beginning to the end. But I first want to take you to another scripture, Revelation 20. I'll tell you why is it such a difficult chapter. Because people have put words in there that is not in there. They talk about, Revelation 20 talks about the th a thousand years that Satan is bound. A thousand years is not millennium. If you read millennium in there, you in trouble. And you're going to forever look for, <laughs> when is the thousand years? When is the thousand years? Thousand is 10 times 10 times 10. 10 is complete. Three is God. Thousand is, it's as long as it's wide, as it's deep. What is it? Perfection. Hey guys, please remember to click the subscribe button on your screen so that we can inform you when we're uploading more content and we have a full library of content to be uploaded, so you're gonna be blessed by that. Remember to click subscribe. Bless you.